Okay, moving on with our map assignment number one, we need to enter our loudspeakers. And of course, the goal of this particular project is to enter two subwoofers and make them cardoid. So we're gonna end up two loudspeakers. And let's start here, um, up here under insert on the menu bar, we're gonna insert loudspeaker system. And lots and lots of options and choices here. It defaults to a giant leopard array. What we're going to do is change this drop down tab here to a single individual loudspeaker. And we're going to pick a really big fat giant sub, the biggest one they make. It doesn't have to be the biggest one, but look, look for this assignment, we're going to use the big boy. This is very heavy, almost 300 pound subwoofer. Um, so, and uh, the other things we want to do for this guy, um, we, let me double check the instructions, make sure I did the right thing here. We're gonna label it. So we'll do front sub. So front sub, and I think that's all the instructions really want me to do. So I'm gonna hit okay, and put sub in, and it kind of did it at the front of the stage. It appears that it did it at the vertex. If I deselect it, yeah, it's right at the front of the staging. We don't want it there. Kind of messed up. I really should have typed in the location of it. So we can edit this. This uh, object, our front sub, is now on this list over here. I can select it like that. And uh, I want to go to object settings. And this is information about that particular object. It's really whatever object I select over here. For example, here's the stage, here's the sub. And I can edit the name again. I can change the type of loudspeaker, all that kind of stuff. But really, it's the position I want to change. And let's be very clear and get this correct here. Um, I wanted to move it 20 feet back, but leave it right centered on the Y axis and leave it on top of the stage. So it's really just a negative 20 I have to type in here. And I'm gonna hit, uh, I don't have to hit okay, just do it. And then when I go back to model view, you can see and I deselect it and it ends up roughly in the middle of the stage. You can see that's a pretty big subwoofer. Um, moving on, uh, we can actually make our first prediction. And this is the exciting part of the program. What we want to do is uh, set it to 85. Oh, I want to set this to third octave so I have more choices of frequencies. And I'm going to set it to 80 hertz, which is going to really be the center of our cardioid pattern, so it'll look really pretty. And now I can predict, and this does take a little time, and in later versions uh, of these um, assignments, I will talk about how to speed up that process slightly. But there you go. Let's zoom in and look at it. It's very beautiful. And I'm going to uh, click to viewport excuse me, two here so I can look top down on it. It's very pretty and this SBL plot over here will tell me what's happening in level. Things that are white are the highest, they're at 110 dB SBL. Things that are dark blue are below 68 dB SBL. Um, we wanna edit that legend to make it a little bit more, um, well, you wanna manipulate these colors because that, that doesn't tell us very much and depending on what you're trying to do, you may wanna ch change how the data is viewed. So we're gonna open up uh, project settings, which again is command shift P and you're going to want to learn that command shift P and move over to the SBL category. And the first thing I'm going to kind of move this off the side here. First thing I'm going to do is move it to three dB per color under resolution. I hit apply. I don't have to close out, which is nice. And it doesn't look as pretty as it did before, but it really tells you where the three dB increments are, where level has dropped by three dB. And this is really useful when you're trying to build arrays and you're trying to decide coverage and where, because in, in the live sound world, we tend to say when things are down three dB or when they're down six dB, we are in or out of coverage depending on what we're trying to do. So I tend to work and it's suggested and it's, this, and it's signed that you work at three dB per color. Um, the next thing we want to do is mess with these values. You kind of have two big things here. We have attenuation and SBL. At the moment, I'm only going to introduce SBL. Uh, this is telling us that these values over here are actual real world SBL values based on the prediction of the loudspeaker. And by changing the max value, you're essentially moving what value hits white, which is the loudest it possibly can be. And we're not even getting close to white. We're in the high 90s right now. So if I make this 100, and apply, you can see the scale has adjusted slightly. The next thing is, is the range here. And this is how many, how broad a range we're gonna show here. And it, it's a, um, if you go too big, and I don't even think it's gonna let me do 60, it won't show that many colors. And if you go too little, it won't show, it will try to show too many colors. No, or I may have that backwards. But either way, you're going to be, as you get more sophisticated with the program, you're going to be messing with it. For this assignment, let's do 100 dB SBL max and 25 as our, our range. So pretty close here. Apply. That's what we're going to work with. So hit OK. 
And uh, now it's time to enter the second subwoofer. Woohoo, party. So I'm going to go back to the isometric view, viewport one. Now I'm in 3D again. I'm going to clear this for a moment. A clear button's pretty useful. Uh, I'm going to center my image because I'm being OCD by moving, by using the, uh, what was that called? The pan tool, that guy right there. And let's enter a second loudspeaker. It's the same process, insert, sig um, nope, sorry, insert loudspeaker system. And what's cool is it does default to the same loudspeaker you chose last time. And uh, we're going to name this uh, rear sub or sub rear. What did I call it earlier? Front sub. So we'll call it rear sub. And is there any other information the instructions are requiring me to do? Oh, yeah. Get the spacing right. To be very specific, it's minus 23.5. What this is, is this is exactly three and a half feet behind the first sub. And the reason we do this is go back to lecture land. We're building a gradient subwoofer array. And for the target of 80 Hertz, we want a quarter wavelength of distance between the subs. And that works out to be mathematically three and a half feet. That's our wavelength. So we're, that's what we're doing here. And the other key thing here is we want to assign this sub to output channel two because we're going to process it in a moment. So it's going to be on pro output two let's apply let's hit okay let's look at it you can see it's perfect now it's just behind the first one it's so big you can barely separate them by three and a half feet um and uh but that's not what i want to do done with the lecture uh it's asking me to predict so let's do a little prediction here so deselect elsewhere hit predict sit back make some popcorn this process is slow on big uh on big um model views but it's pretty easy now and you can see they're really close to each other and they're summing they're making it a lot louder than we saw it a moment ago we are achieving white now we're achieving over 100 db spl we've basically seen 6 db of gain but it's certainly not cardoid so to do cardoid we're going to have to tweak the processor which i say we make another video for what do you think cool let's do that